Yo, what up? So, the big day's coming, and in teaser season, we also have the arrival of March 21st. On March 21st, they're going to have a lot of information about Path of Exile and Necropolis League, and more importantly, Path of Exile 2 beta info. And if you haven't been paying attention, you probably don't even know they've had tons of interviews. Jonathan, who's the lead dev on PoE2 right now, has been doing the circuit, baby. He's been everywhere, and he's done interviews with Crip, Ziz, Budijo, Darth, and Gazzy. Rise Cutie, Ziggy D, Noogie, Preach Gaming, and then just various gaming outlets and probably a few that I maybe even missed. He has been everywhere. However, obviously, if you do an interview everywhere, how the hell do people know what you're saying? And he honestly has been saying a lot of interesting things in all these interviews. And I figured, hey, this is the perfect time to just collect all this information, put it all in one place, and oh my god, I didn't realize what I signed myself up for, because these interviews were long, and I got as much info as I can, and hopefully, right before the event goes live, you'll know everything you need to know about PoE2 beta and all the info they've said so far. So sit back, maybe play a game or something, this is probably going to be a long one, and I'm going to sit here and just read out everything I wrote down for all the information I have. A big topic, obviously, I think most people want to know is what the hell is going to be in the beta, right? And how's the beta going to work? So you're going to go from the beta starts, you play it, they're going to have two resets in the beta. Now, obviously, we don't even know how much of a beta is going to be open. We don't know if it's going to be private or public. But if you're in the beta, there will be two full resets, like, you know, a season wipe. And they're debating on whether or not there's going to be a season along with PoE2. Most likely not. It sounds like they may have one season on, like, the second reset to give people more time to learn the game and figure out what they need to balance. And it's going to be heavily balanced. They're going to change a lot of stuff as people play and test the economy, test the trade, test the campaign. And they want to get numbers. And then once they're happy with that, about six months, months of the beta of people playing it it's gonna go straight into launch there's gonna be no time gap and the, to the point where your character will will still exist like you'll be playing your beta character and then ideally three days later you know they have their maintenance they set it up they go live boom poe launch you can still just play that character it'll be on maybe like standard quote unquote or whatever but it's still gonna exist and you can just keep playing that if you wanted in fact most of the end game that we know should exist in some form in poe2 in general we just don't know in what order they're gonna be added so the beta is the full game it's going to be the entire campaign and the end game. In fact, the end game, they're going to have 60 maps already ready to go. And obviously those maps are going to all have their own individual boss that is going to be fully developed, have multiple mechanics and pinnacle bosses even are going to exist in PoE 2. So yeah, Maven is going to exist, right? The whole time skip and everything like that, that all of that is going to be in PoE 2, potentially at the end of the beta or at least in launch. On top of that, if they want to port over, for example, Delve or things like that, they can actually just port that over and just obviously buff it, balance it a little bit and just seamlessly put it in poe2 so poe2 beta slash launch i mean it's going to be pretty seamless like if you want to play poe2 you can just play the beta when you get in and there you go you can just play poe2 and you're just playing it the only thing that they're going to add is a lot more old content to it once they're happy with the balance so let's give an example and keep in mind i'm just paraphrasing things jonathan said i'm not adding my own stuff in here you have that three month cycle and they're happy with the balance they're willing to then add maybe delve go back add an older league, league mechanic or an experimental league mechanic something along those lines in the second reset and at that point it's to test it get the economy running add more people to the beta go into launch boom there we go and then we're seamlessly in poe2 launch and speaking of poe2 launch they're probably gonna add this in the uh the live stream but they're gonna have a lot of content ready to go for launch so during that time period once they're ready for the balance they have content like leagues of content that they're ready to add to poe2 launch ready to go so we're going from poe2 straight into like crazy content end game content revamp content pinnacle bosses all this shit is going to be renewed and redone and we're going to have an entire new end game once poe2 officially launches so buckle up uh once the beta is here in my mind like poe2 is here once they that first three month cycle is done and they're happy with it you pretty much have the full game and we just we have poe1 and poe2 now and honestly i'm so fucking excited i'm like it's early i haven't ate any food and i'm genuinely excited even just saying this out loud <laughs> i genuinely just i want to play like arpg into arpg and unfortunately no other game has been able to give me that excitement that poe does and just hearing that makes me just fucking i'm just juiced because it's like fuck we're at we're, it's here we're it, ah whatever on to the next topic 
So I think the big one is going to be a gold topic. Gold is new in PoE2, obviously, but they've expanded on what they're going to change and make gold available to do. And in these interviews, they even realized that they probably should use gold to respect stuff while they were talking to Ziz. So these interviews were pretty interesting and pretty valuable. So the big one is Last Epoch. Last Epoch has a trades function and they realized that. And a lot of people were like, hey, this would be really cool. This is a good idea. And at a certain point, Jonathan realized that they can no longer stick to what they know for POE1 trade. Like they have to change something. And, and they come to the conclusion that people will not accept this non-instant trading anymore. And the long story short is that gold is going to be the medium that you use to pay for instant buyouts and instant currency. So your gold is going to be something you only earn while playing the game. You cannot buy gold. You cannot trade for gold. You, you only get gold from playing the game. So the way they explained it is that gold is going to be used for instant buyouts, right? But the more, let's say, expensive a item is, right? Crafting or tiers it has, it's going to be more expensive to instant buy something like that. Whereas currency is going to be very cheap for gold because obviously people are going to be using that. And there's even going to be a separate system that they said they'll add to instant buy currency. Now for items and stuff, you're going to still be using the trade website. But for currency, it sounds like they're going to have a quicker way to do this potentially in game. Or maybe the trade website, you just click instant buy, go straight into your inventory, you know, something like that. They're playing with the idea and developing it more, but currency will be fast to buy. Expensive items are going to be a, a sizable goal cost though speaking of gold you're gonna also be able to use that now to respec and one of their goals was again while talking to Ziz was that they realized respecing in the end game is probably pretty easy in PUE one especially if you have you know good resources obviously I'm a veteran player so I agree with that sentiment but I also understand that there's a lot of new players in my comments that are like hey this game's hard what the fuck so their goal is that gold will be a way to respec now when you're lower level like let's say level 60 you should be able to use gold and respec somewhat easily it'll be a cost but you can do it where Whereas if you're like level 80, the conversation may actually be respecting may not be worth it and it might be better to just reroll, you know, and make a new juggernaut, for example. So the higher level you go and the later on you go, the conversation should be more about rerolling rather than specking in gold. At least that's their current philosophy for PoE2 so far from what I understand. And the last thing on gold is that it'll be automatically picked up. And that also brought up the conversation of how much should they be able to automatically pick up? How big should the radius be? So they're going to increase the radius of pickup in general, also because WASD movement's a thing now. So they're going to have a bigger pickup radius and you'll be able to just run over gold and pick it up. And that's that's a, that's pretty cool to me, honestly. I, I'm i I'm definitely on camp. So let's auto pick up some stuff, you know? And in a general topic, I know a lot of people are going to be worried about this, so I should probably put it near the front of the video. PoE2 is not going to be slow. He has reiterated in multiple interviews that that this is marketing. They want the game to look slow. They want you to see cool effects. They want you to hit a mob and get it knocked back. They want you to see all of that. But in the live stream, they're most likely going to show a more full version of what the game actually is going to look like. Because obviously, PU and one players, including myself, I'm like, yeah, I have faith in Triple G. They've never like really, they make mistakes, but I have faith that like they know what makes the game sell, right? And that's big stuff happening very quickly, big mob density. Jonathan reiterated multiple times that yes, the speed is still gonna be there, mob density is still gonna be there. They just wanna add a lot more tools and slow it down a little bit. Not a ton, but we shouldn't be seeing Vol Spark shit, you know, flying through the map in two minutes kind of stuff, but you should still definitely be able to speed up on a Ranger, still knock back, blow up a bunch of mobs and keep, you know, trucking on through. So speed is just a marketing thing. They're slowing it down on purpose. We're still gonna get the same POE we want with a lot more tools and pretty, pretty colors. Another big topic is pausing. Pausing is something you can do in PoE 2. When you're playing solo, you can be fighting a boss and you can pause the game. Now you can't change your passive tree. You can't take items off, but what you can do during pausing is type to people. You can talk to people, you can have chats, you can just go to the bathroom, you can look in your inventory, you can look at your character sheet and check your stats, you can look at your flask, everything. You just can't change things, but you can see everything if that makes sense. And there should be no cooldown between pausing and not pausing. Obviously, if you know, you're pausing in a boss fight to maybe dodge something, this is something that they're still kind of debating on how they want to tackle, but ultimately you should still be able to pause during a boss fight. If you're mapping, you can just pause, there you go. However, if you are in multiplayer and they had a big conversation about this, if you're in multiplayer and you're in a map and you pause the game and you go AFK, if you're in a party and someone joins your map, it will instantly unpause the game. So they're probably going to have a warning. Like if you're in a party and you pause the game, hey, 
somebody joins this map or whatever, it will unpause the game and you will die. So obviously this is something that you should be aware of in general, but they have developed this pausing system over the last like two months, even more so to the point where they actually had a conversation and I'm really excited about this is that I play hardcore and I've had one or two disconnect deaths in the like last five years of PoE, but usually it's just because my internet goes out. To put that in perspective, in last epoch, I lost four characters to disconnects in a week because their servers were dog shit and my internet was perfectly fine. Obviously, I'm frustrated. Hardcore players get frustrated. Even in softcore, if you're disconnecting and you lose EXP and you're trying to get to 99 or 100, you're frustrated too. So one thing that they're debating that there's no reason not to have is if they detect lag for more than one second on your character client, why wouldn't they just instantly have the system pause the game for you? And this was one of those realizations that's really cool is during the Rise interview with uh, Ziggy D and Noogie where they had this realization of, huh, if you're fighting a boss and you lagged out, should we then just permanently have a system that allows the game to pause and save you? And if you don't connect in a certain time, then they'll just disconnect you from the server after 10 seconds. And obviously if your client reconnects, then you'll just, you'll, you know, lag back in and you'll just be paused. And then you just unpause the game if you, you know, don't even full disconnect. And this is, this is something that's really cool. I really, really like this idea because in general, if you're softcore, it helps you. And if you're hardcore, it can save your character, but either way, everybody benefits and it shouldn't be abusable in some form. Obviously the next question would be like lag switching and things like that. They're aware of stuff like that, but you can pause the game anyway. So it's kind of like, what would, what would the benefit be in lag switching? So this is just a really cool topic. I'm kind of really excited about this one. This one sounds really fun to just save me, you know, six months from now where I'm just, I, internet goes out and stuff like that. It, it's just really cool. I, I really love this. This system sounds awesome. On the topic of pausing and bosses though, teleports still exist. Um, I can't remember if they said they were gonna only have three teleports per boss. I, I, I feel like they said that, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was three maps, but anyway, it doesn't really matter because ultimately when you're fighting a boss, obviously I'm just gonna use hardcore as an example. That's what I'm most familiar with. So if I'm fighting a boss and I don't think it's going well, I'll either log out or I will open a portal and leave. Well, when you're fighting a boss, logging out is now lo really no longer an option. If you disconnect, like if I log out, the only thing that might happen is that the game gets paused, but I am locked in there, right? So if I was to, you know, try to alt it for or something like that, it, it basically is just not gonna work. They have systems in now where it's like, hey, you need to fight the boss. The other option, though, is portal. You can open a portal, but it's going to be a two second animation of opening that portal in a boss fight. So, you know, for example, maybe you're doing the Maven. You have a moment where she switches animations and you're like, I am dead. I have no flask. I got to get the fuck out of here. You can hit your portal and after two seconds, then you can leave. But in terms of like alt f out of the boss, the logout macro is essentially dead in PoE 2. Personally, I don't really care. We use it because it's mandatory in PoE 1, but in PoE 2, you know, obviously if their systems are more developed and the bosses aren't just one-shotting fucking giga slamming, then it should be fine and nobody should have any problem. And hey, if the game changes, I'll adapt with it and you should too. And if you don't like it, PoE 1 exists and we can just go play that. One small fundamental change is that cooldowns will no longer be a thing in PoE 2. So if you want to use a skill, you can use a skill. If you have an AoE skill or a single target skill, go ahead. A single target skill will do significantly more damage than an AoE ability, for example. But obviously they're balancing in a way where if there's a ton of mobs on your screen, then the AoE skill has to now be more valuable to use. Whereas the single target skill needs to do a shit ton more damage than an AoE skill. This balance needs to be obvious and nearly mandatory, right? So obviously if we're talking, you know, Flame Blast, that's a massive AoE skill. It should do less damage versus you know double strike where double strike is obviously going to hit one target well that should do almost fucking 10x damage than flame blast ever should and so their concept in poe 2 is that aoe skills are mandatory and good but only in the context of killing a lot of mobs one small thing that i think went under the radar potentially if you haven't been paying a massive amount of attention is that they announced months ago the crafting bench was gone and now the crafting bench is back so they decided that uh hey it's it's probably a good thing to have the crafting bench in poe in general so they changed their mind on that one so cool a big topic here i will try to summarize this one as best as i can it's rarity and quantity so if you're a, a rarity simp or quantity simp hey props to you but there's going to be changes. So in PoE 2, the idea of what happened with Wildwood, I mean, that's the perfect example, right? Is we had thousands and thousands of loot popping on the ground and our screens were covered in it. Rarity and quantity will exist in PoE 2. However, the way it affects loot will be different. You will get more items. Yes, like you obviously you will. 
nowhere near the level that we do in PoE 1. However, the idea is that you will get a lot more valuable items. Not rare, because if I said rare, then you would just think uniques, but valuable in terms of maybe stack size of certain things, various items dropping, obviously uniques, of course, potentially bases even, right? Because bases are gonna be a big thing in PoE 2 where you're gonna get a base that has a roll or two on it. So maybe rarity and quantity will affect the type of bases that you get more often that are more valuable to you. So the concept is gonna be more that you get, not that you get a hundred times more loot on the ground, but that you get a hundred times more valuable items instead. And obviously the idea would that it's not just uniques. In Path of Exile 2, you will have 36 ascendancies. And in this ascendancy, various people asked various questions. So I'll just connect all their interviews in this one simple topic. Ascendancies will still be the same way they work as in PoE 1 which means that you can obviously play as a druid, right? Turn into a bear and your ascendancies will have things that will obviously affect your transformation. However, that doesn't mean that a juggernaut doesn't have things that you'd want when you're a bear. So ascendancies are still the same logic where you can play anything as anything. Obviously a druid is gonna have more ascendancies based on transformations and such, but that doesn't mean that you can't play as a bear, as a witch and vice versa. So ascendancies are still the same way. They like the way they work. They just wanna give you more options and they obviously want to send it's used to all be equivalent in some form rather than probably what we have right now where we have a gladiator and some people probably don't even know there's a gladiator ascendancy because nobody fucking plays it so hopefully that never happens again where each ascendancy has its own value in some form and everybody can kind of play or pick whichever one you want with your class on the topic of you know items and things being a little bit different in poe one than they do poe two for example boss invitations now boss invitations simply do not exist in poe two you'll have a way to get to the boss but apparently it's going to be something completely different that they don't even want to talk about yet but they have already worked out how it's going to work so invitations and rolling invitations and stuff like that for bosses specifically doesn't exist in poe2 and whatever system they have and whatever they're cooking sounds interesting but has nothing to do with invites so invites are dead if you've been playing, you know, Last Epoch or ARPGs in general, a lot of them have a little thing here and there that's a little interesting. For example, Last Epoch has obviously the trade thing. Well, PoE2 is like, AO, I get it. That's a good idea. We'll do that. However, another thing is SSF buffs. So in Last Epoch, they have a system where basically if you're playing trade, then you know, you can only wear trade items. You can't wear items from people who played SSF and got a lot more loot. But if you were playing SSF, you got a shit ton more loot, you got a lot more rares, but you couldn't sell those. So the question was, is, you know, is SSF buffs anything they'd be interested in? And they're not against buffing it slightly. Like if you're playing SSF, they are interested in potentially making a slight buff. Nothing like Last Epoch has done where you're getting 10 times more loot, but at the restriction that you would not be able to trade this gear ever. And if you're SSF, they would essentially even lock your character so your character would be in a league and it would just be locked in an ssf and you would go to like standard ssf that gear would only be on your character forever so if they were considering doing that that's how they would do it but they haven't made any commitment one way or another so maybe ssf boys get a slight buff but even then it probably wouldn't be anything like 50x items so taper your expectations currently in poe we do not have maps that give like a positive mod right i'm talking like damage like player gains 50 percent increased damage player gains 10 percent increased movement speed things like that and this is a topic they explored for a little bit um their conclusion was that they don't really want positive mods because obviously then you would just re-roll the map to have that mod right you wouldn't you'd roll 60 map and try to get that mod on every map if you could do that so because we are uh, min maxers obviously they're not really interested in doing that and they're not particularly uh interested in diving into all the problems positive mods would create so the maps should still be the same however there will be obviously vault versions of maps that are still somewhat beneficial and it sounds like they want vols to be kind of a, a risk reward thing where you can get rewarded for it but you can also make it a lot harder and that's where they're happy with it being so vol orbs are definitely the the goal based and here we have a, a big one and i'm not even sure how i don't even know if i'm qualified to explain this one but i'm going to do my best there was a big topic of immunities and if you didn't know in poe2 you know obviously you can have a dual tree spec right so you have a staff you can do fire damage with it you can also have a secondary item and that is a lightning version and your skill tree will accommodate whichever one you set up previously so you're doing a you're doing a map you run into a rare and it has fire resistance and you were using your fire staff so switch to your lightning staff and now hit it with lightning lightning and kill it so that's something that they have in mind that they want right where you can just press a swap button you still have you know your skill tree and everything set up the same way but now you just switch to your lightning build and kill the fire resistance mob this topic was debatable because it was like 
is it then possible to have immunities? And this is something Jonathan seems like he's he's exploring and he's definitely on the side of, well, as a developer, we're going to give you the tools to deal with a mob that is just resistant to fire, like 90% less fire damage taken. If we give you the tools to solve this puzzle, then you should just solve the puzzle. But a problem is, is obviously feel because we're stupid. We're players. We want to play one build with one button and run through and zoom, zoom and stuff explodes. Obviously, we have somewhat of a problem with that, where if you run into a mob, you're happy with your fire build. You run into that fire resistant mob. And this is even true in PoE 1. And it's just ignite resistant. And you're just like, OK, cool. I guess I can't fucking do anything now. I, I'm, a, I'm an ignite build. So I'm just going to hit you with 10 percent of my entire build damage until it dies or skip the mob. But because we have a tool we have plenty of tools in poe2 in theory to deal with this situation that they've given us should it be possible and this is definitely a debate ultimately even in the conversation they decided well it wouldn't be resistant to like fire damage right it would be maybe resistant to wither or maybe it would be resistant to ignite you know in some form and it would be like a 60 70 percent less effectiveness of it because obviously we have multiple tools but basically you're probably going to be able to play a one button build but if you run into a mob and it's unkillable and you decide you don't want to deal with this shit it's going to be on you because we're definitely going to have the tools to deal with it but with the weapon swap you should be able to just press you know a space bar and then have everything already set up to deal with this mob and one shot it so they're debating on this immunities level it was definitely a big strenuous topic they spent a lot of time on and that's kind of the conclusion they came to was maybe not immune but they're going to have stuff like that in the game one of the topics they brought up uh in one of these interviews i believe it was the wudijo uh interview is loot filters and last epoch has loot filters where you can make them in game and stuff and ultimately jonathan's point of view is that they could do that it wouldn't be like the hardest thing ever but the third party community which you know props to them they make so much good stuff and they focus on that one thing for such a long time that it doesn't feel like they could make that in game that would it would be as good as filter blade for example so their stance right now is there's a lot of third-party stuff if you want really really excellent filters there's plenty of pre-made excellent filters out there but then obviously that cop topic is like well how do how does a new player know that right and i guess that's where they you come to people like me who'll be like here how, here's how to make a filter in poe so oh i speaking of which i just realized i should probably make that video huh damn that's gonna be a long one anyway the other topic then would be loot and if you didn't know, uh, I'm mentioning a lot of Last Epoch, but obviously it's just because it just came out. And so a lot of these people ask questions relating from, you know, Last Epoch's good stuff to PoE and stuff that they don't like. None of this is my opinion, for the record. I just want to throw that in here at some point. Loot on the ground. In PoE, obviously we have Wisdom Scrolls, and in PoE 2, we're going to have like a book that you just walk up to, click it, boom, it instant IDs everything in your inventory. And what is the idea behind this? What's the motivation? And is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? So, for example, Ziz likes things on the ground being ID'd. Personally, I'm just going to throw my two cents in here. I don't. Um, and Jonathan kind of is in this camp too, where he wants you to pick up loot and be like, oh, cool, that's a nice base, or hey, that's a cool unique. And you want to pick up everything in the map, finish the map, and then you have that session, right, where you go to your hideout or you go to town. And you click and then you go through your items and then you sell stuff throw stuff in your inventory and then go back to the map um and i personally i agree with that i'm gonna throw my two cents in here because I, I this one is definitely i'm a little bit passionate about i do not like loot being on the ground in a map i feel like it ruins my flow where i look at the item and oh i made it a special color so i look at it it's like oh damn that might be an upgrade and then i kind of get stuck there and now i just want to leave the map and go look at that item i don't i don't like that i want to go through the map kill the boss go to my loot and then have my loot session where i'm like ooh, what's all the oh all the preciouses i have obviously this is uh you can leave your comment if you got to this point in the video and and put your two cents in on this debate obviously no site is wrong i just think i like the no loot identified picking up option and obviously some people like the loot being id pick it all off the ground and knowing but it sounds like in poe2 we're gonna have the items drop unidentified regardless on the topic of loot smart loot is a thing if you don't know what that is basically items would drop and it would basically be rolled with like 70 life and like two resistances and it was kind of like wow this is a really good piece of gear i i want this and smart loot has been brought up so much by a lot of people personally i didn't really care for it because it's kind of like whatever but i also just don't really care i just don't really care about a lot of stuff but a lot of the community really liked smart loot however their topic is their point of view is that well smart loot was bad because they made it roll life and like two res or life one damage roll and a res and that's basically telling you hey just play life builds or hey just play energy shield builds 
and not letting the player decide what's valuable and what isn't. So smart loot, any form is never coming back. Smart loot is dead because it's ultimately a way for the devs to tell you to play the game and they don't want you to ever feel like you have to play the game in a certain way. If you want to play flame dash totems like Mathel, go ahead and play flame dash totems and that loot is going to be what you're looking for. Another really cool thing about Uniques is that they have their own animation system now. So this is where it gets nerd shit. And from this point on, if you're still watching, we're gonna get into the more nerdy detailed topics. So in PUE2, they have one rig, and basically that means they have one setup of characters where you can put a ranger on this rig or a marauder on this rig, and the scaling should work still. Whereas in PUE1, the witch is a witch, she's smaller, you can't take marauder animations to put them on her because they won't match, they're gonna be awkward, and her hands won't be where the weapon is, for example. So in PUE2, a cool thing you can do is have a unique item that has a custom animation or a custom skill that has a unique animation animation and you can put that on every character now because each character has their own rig all the animations will line up and everything will be perfect so uniques now will actually be even more unique than normal because they're going to have their own animations and custom animation attack patterns which obviously we can get into the deep topic of well attack time being affected things like that we don't know obviously but i think this is a really cool change that just it's just one of those things where it's like that yeah, people aren't even going to notice if you're a new player, but as an older player, you're going to be like, wow, this is awesome. Also, if you're an older player, you know about uh, Leech. I am not touching Leech with a 10-foot pole. Basically, Leech was reworked one more time, and it's very simple. You have Leech when you play the game in PUE2, and you just have Leech forever. The only thing that changes is higher level you get, monsters will passively gain more Leech resistance, and that's it. If you have 10 sources of leech, then you will leech more, but the monsters will gain passive leech resistance, and that's it. There will be no immunities to leech, none of that shit. Monsters will simply just exist, and you can leech from them. And that's all I'm touching. Like, I'm not touching this topic anymore. If you didn't know, holy crap, explaining leech, I'd have to sit here for 10 minutes to try to make it make sense, and I'm not doing that. Pants. I Yeah, pants are in the game but not as an item. They like the balance between the items, but they're gonna have pants in the game that'll be attached to your boots. So boots essentially now are pants. Yeah, you know, I know it doesn't sound exactly, <laughs> you kind of want pants in the game, right? Templar walking around naked without a skirt for a whole damn fucking 10 years. But pants will be at least animation wise in the game alongside with the boots. And in the topic of mobs, mobs are, they mentioned specifically that some mobs in PoE2, um, from what they said is maybe like a quarter of all the mobs that they have currently in PoE 2 at least have more mechanics as just trash mobs or rare mobs than the hardest bosses in PoE in general even map bosses things like that which makes sense because they reference Hillock you know and like Hillrake where obviously those bosses are very simple these mobs these bosses are going to have layers on layers of mechanics if you're in a multiplayer party they're going to do different things kind of like you can't just have somebody like tank the boss because that boss will have a mechanic where it's like okay well this person's tanking me then I'm going to target target the rage person so there's gonna be multiple multiple layers of boss mechanics stages phases things like that and it's gonna make it a more free experience also though the trash mobs may be a little bit more dangerous but rather than just you know giving it essence modifiers that give it 80% less damage taken it's gonna be more about yeah this mob has like this attack pattern that obviously you need to be wary of rather than just giving it giga tankiness so their goal is to obviously add a lot of mechanics in the game in general and the bosses and also in that form of talking about mobs they're diversifying loot a lot more right so pretty much bosses don't give you a lot of loot in poe one obviously we can have a whole debate and conversation about that but in general you know your league mechanics usually give you a lot of loot maybe if you're targeting the bosses at the end to get like map boss drop the disparity of where the loot came from in poe one is it's definitely more on the league mechanic and then just mobs dropping a lot of shit so in poe two their goal is that the boss itself will drop you one third of the entire loot you would have gotten from a map so the goal is one third from a league mechanic uh, you know, let's say Alva or something like that. And then one third is just from the trash mobs on the way to the boss. And the boss will be longer and have more mechanics, but he's also going to give you one third of what you would have gotten for the rest of the map too. So they want to split it into one third across three different sections, ideally, right? So the bosses will drop you a, a ton more stuff, but obviously they want to make it worth the time and more difficult. And on the topic of bosses, you know, and hardcore as a hardcore player, if I die to a boss, who fucking care? But they've definitely made some vast changes in this regard. So bosses can no longer be cheesed like you can in PoE 1, right? For example, if you ran into a, a boss that's hard in PoE 1, let's say Foundry, right? Foundry kills a lot of people. So you run into Foundry, it kills you, fuck, go back into the portal, run to the boss, it's half HP, you finish it off. 
that no longer happens in poe2 even in the end game so in the campaign in the end game if you die to a boss it resets now there will be like a checkpoint they'll add before the boss of some sort at least they said for the campaign i'm not sure about the end game they didn't mention end game specifically i don't want to put words in their mouth but the boss will reset to full hp so you can't cheese the boss which means that the boss is going to be harder however obviously it has to give you a good reward so that balance of it's going to be hard but it's going to give you one third of the loot obviously will make it very interesting because in poe1 we just do not have that, that you just you <laughs> bowl over the bosses and we just like, move on with our day right you open the portal before you even shot your projectile out but in poe2 it's going to be more time consuming hopefully cool you know a little bit more epic but the reward definitely needs to match that hopefully they get that balance right it sounds like they're on the right path in my opinion these last couple topics are going to be mostly quick because these are just rapid fire questions but if you're curious about them at this point then here's your answer righteous fire will be in path of exile 2 but it will not work how it does in poe 1 even though obviously they just changed righteous fire in poe 1 in poe 2 it will be even more different in a completely different way but yes it will still exist alongside minions having fundamental you know core changes obviously i already mentioned that but minions the way their role will be expected in poe 2 will be yes they can do damage but also they should hopefully have other functions besides just me do damage flask change this is a interesting one the flask will no longer replenish on normal mobs so you will basically have your flask obviously but they will be more valuable because you won't just have infinite flask no matter what ascendancy you pick only blue mobs and rare mobs will give you flash charges back so obviously movement speed flash for the record is not in the game you know obviously if you didn't know that so they're going to be probably just full offensive or defensive so you run into a rare if you need defensive flash you would press those if you run into a boss and you have damage flash then this is the time to use it right so your flasks are going to be fundamentally a little bit different but piano spamming is dead and flask automation they didn't mention that so i'm not sure if flask automation is still going to be in the game or not but i'd imagine it most likely wouldn't have a reason to be in the game if we're only pressing our flasks you know uh, three times a minute rather than 30 times a minute during the campaign the exp penalty will not exist there will be no penalty because the bosses will be hard however yes in the end game an exp penalty will exist and probably should exist in some form but they're not sure exactly how punishing they want it to be quite yet spirit is something that obviously exists no longer will auras affect your mana however they also have a spirit affecting hp so they're going to put a support in the game that makes it so like blood magic still kind of exists now obviously this is a nerd topic and obviously we have no info on how we would even do this because we don't know the aura values but yes you could still do somewhat of a blood magic setup and on the topic of auras and gear this is a definitely a nerd topic where you know this is your your build planning section of gear gear is going to have flat numbers not more multipliers now what i mean by that is that their goal is to have flat fire damage not percent fire damage flat armor flat evasion maybe a uh, flat spirit right so your your gear is going to be more flat number your tree is going to be percentage number so your more and more multipliers should come from the tree or maybe some you know secret cool unique or whatever but ultimately your tree will be the more percenters your gear will be the flat and obviously this concept allows them to have a lot of more multipliers on the tree like you would normally expect but if your gear sucks well then they're not going to give you as much right so the flat number is all on your gear and that's obviously how we see incremental increases in our defenses and damage on another topic is energy shield Energy shield will exist in PoE2, however, it will not be able to have, you know, like 6,000 energy shield regen per second. It will be heavily more on the recharge based idea of having a big energy shield, but you can't take damage for, you know, two or three seconds. You know, maybe use a, a big guard skill when you finally took damage that buys you time for your energy shield to recharge. And then, you know, you repeat this cycle because there's no cooldowns. So energy shield, obviously still going to be very valuable, but it's going to be more about big energy shield and then having that ability to survive while your recharge charges up transfigure gems will exist in poe2 same with vol skills they're actually going to be more valuable at least vol skills transfigure gems they have no idea how they're going to allow you to obtain them because you know lab is not existing in poe2 but vol skills you know will have essentially no cooldown and if you can just keep spamming them you know in theory they would be very valuable but because the way the game's going to work more cooldown based around big pack of mobs i need a button to blow all of them up then vol skills obviously would fit that perfectly so vol skills should be much more valuable in poe2 they believe obviously you know they've tried to make vol skills work a lot in poe1 and such and they never quite do but they're pushing them pretty hard in poe2 it sounds like melee sucks um i don't think anybody would debate that right melee is just bad in poe1 it's playable but 
it, it does kind of suck. I mean, our best melee builds were like Earth Shatter, and that was really just you being near the mob and not actually even hitting the mob yourself. In Path of Exile 2, obviously, melee is a huge topic. The biggest reason they probably even are making and working on PvE 2 with pushback mechanics, WASD movement, movement in general, several layers of guard, all that stuff is just because PvE has bad melee. And so in PvE 2, their big topic is melee needs to be good. They don't want melee totems, for example, to be the, hey, put it down, we have to, because it gives you 60% more damage. That will not exist. Melee totems will be a melee totem. It will be a form of a melee bro who will hit something hard as fuck, and his negative is that he's melee. He should just do more damage, right? And so their whole concept was, yeah, they don't even remember why they gave melee totems the buff they did, but obviously it was probably just some sort of a band-aid. They have completely forgotten even why, and it's stupid. They literally were like, yeah, that's dumb. Shouldn't This shouldn't be like this. So in PoE2, melee is obviously a big topic, and the totems will exist as a damage option rather than something we have to put on when we're playing fucking splitting steel or anything in general. If you're a newer player and you're still watching this video, then props to you. I highly doubt anybody is. But in-game tools will be vastly better. They have worked heavily on this to have an in-game help system, tool system, pop-ups, things like that for a newer player to just tell you, hey, don't do this, or you should do this, or hey, by the way, you can do this. And they've been doing a lot of NDA testing with people, not people who just don't play the game at all, who've never played PoE, and just bringing them in and having a ton of them play the game and then they're just taking notes on every single thing that these people are learning or running into a problem with and trying to take that and learn from it. So if you're a newer player, there's probably never a better time to, to play PoE than when PoE 2 launches. And ultimately, a quick one is, hey, PoE 2 will not be slower than PoE 1 in the way you're thinking. It's still gonna be fast, it's still gonna be just as complex, but they have to make it more accessible to new players. They preach this in multiple interviews and it makes sense, obviously on the outside looking in, they want a lot of new people to play their game, see that it's really complex and not be intimidated by it and rather be inspired by it. That's their goal. Hey, I'm just a person making content on it. I'll see if they stick the landing. You'll see if they stick the landing, but that's what their goal is. All right, and that's all the information from all the interviews. Took me a while to find all this info. And on videos that I feel like I'm very tired after making, I'm gonna just be like, yo, drop a sub, like the video. This was a pain in the ass to make if anybody hears this. I have no idea what I'm gonna make next. In fact, I'm probably gonna go make breakfast and then I'm probably gonna go live. So, hey, that's me. I'll catch you later. Jesus, I'm thirsty. Holy shit.